Hey all, welcome back to the Fire and Water Cooking Channel. I'm Darren, and today I'm going to start a series of videos that um, I think will help everybody. If you're not familiar with sous vide or if you're still learning sous vide, I think it's uh, going to help you out a lot. Um, I have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. In the Facebook group, I get a lot of people that are new to the concept of sous vide, so I wanted to start this series to kind of help them out. And anybody that's interested in you know, learning how to use sous vide either by itself on its own or combined it with barbecue and grilling and, uh, you know, other, other cooking, you know, just so that um, you can get the basics down. Um, it's not very hard once you learn the basics. So, okay, now we're going to answer some of the questions. First question that comes to mind is what is sous vide? You know, that's one of the basic questions that everybody asks right off the bat. What does it mean? Where did it come from? What is it? Um, why is it different than anything else? So what is sous vide is the question that um, I'm gonna answer right now. And sous vide is a, just a French term that means under vacuum. And the reason it is under vacuum, you know, they use that term under vacuum is because usually when you're cooking, you're cooking in a bag, plastic bag, and there's no air in it. It doesn't have to be particularly in a vacuum sealed bag, although that does make it a lot easier, but you can, uh, you can use a Ziploc bag and you can get all the air out of it in different ways and just suck in the air out with a vacuum sealer. But the concept is you're cooking in a bag that has no air in it in a water bath. The water completely surrounds the food. You don't want any air in the bag because you want the water to be touching the food all over the place. The reason is because water is actually a better uh, transfer of heat than air is. It um, actually it will cook a lot better. And what that lets you do is get a better product in the end. So sous vide, what it is, really is cooking in a water bath at a precise temperature uh, in a plastic bag with no air in it. Uh, second question is, where did sous vide come from? Where did it all of a sudden come from? Well, sous vide's actually been around since around the 70s. It started, um, you know, some of the myths and legends and uh, um, you know, stories behind its uh, inception where some French chefs, uh, you know, back in, in France were, you know, competing chefs were trying to figure out a better way to cook some uh, really hard to cook fish, something that was really fragile and could overcook real easy. They were trying to find a better way to prepare it so that they could bring it to their guests uh, easier, like, you know, so they wouldn't lose as much during the cooking process, you know, overcooking it or what have you. So one of them had the idea of actually taking a pot of water and heating it up to a precise temperature, measuring it with an instant read thermometer and putting it in a bag to cook it at that particular uh, specific temp temperature. So that's the legend. It started in the 70s and it kind of grew from there. And then, you know, of course, you know, France is where a lot of the uh, top chefs train and learn and they, the concept kind of grew. People started whispering about it. Um, fast forward to around 2008, uh, Thomas Keller, who is a famous American chef that owns a few really high end restaurants. One of them is a French laundry. It's one of the best restaurants in the USA. Um, wrote a book called Under Pressure that's about sous vide. And ever since then, it's kind of gotten more and more popular. He had a company called PolyScience that kind of uh, used to make medical medical equipment, um, stuff, uh, not real circulators, but water um, heaters that would uh, are used for sterilizing medical equipment and stuff. And they actually put that to use in using it for the sous vide because all it really was is a uh, heater that, you know, heated the water to a precise temperature and kept it there for a long period of time. So they developed, pretty much developed the, um, you know, sous vide circulator, which is kind of what we have today. What makes sous vide different than any other cooking method? Well, one of the things that I really liked about sous vide is I've always been into big into barbecue and cooking. I've been into cooking for 30 years. I used to work in restaurants back when I was younger for first 10 years of my, you know, uh, actually uh, working life. 
So I was always interested in cooking and different types of cooking and different methods and styles. And what makes sous vide different is the whole concept of cooking in a water bath at a precise temperature. You know, you can cook in your oven, you can set your oven to 225 uh, or your grill or whatever, but it doesn't mean that it's actually exactly 225 degrees in that oven or in your grill. The air is always moving. Air is not a good transfer of heat. So, you know, you really might be 225 by where the thermostat is, but it might be 250 over here on this side. So it's not really always a precise temperature. But with water, you know, the water is actually, you, know, you can measure it because it is, you know, there's more, uh, it's more dense. So you can actually get that water to a precise temperature. And, and with the circulator, keeping this water moving through the heater, it actually makes it so this water in the bath is the exact temperature within a half a degree that's reading on here on the thermometer. So, which makes it a lot different than any other cooking method. Frying can probably be similar, but usually when you're frying, you can't really fry at a lower temperature. So um, sous vide is result. actually yeah. a lower and slower method of cooking. It's similar to, uh, I compare it to barbecue cooking because barbecue is low and slow. When you cook a brisket or you cook ribs or you cook pork butt um, for pulled pork, you're cooking it for a long time at a lower temperature. So you're giving the meat uh, time to render out fat for the collagen and different um, tendons and all that that are inside the meat to actually cook and render down and turn into a gelatin so they're not tough anymore. Um, so doing that on the grill, you can do it on the grill, but unfortunately when you do it on a grill, it actually turns, you can you have to make it more well done. You can't cook it in let's say medium rare or medium and get that result on a grill because of the you just can't control the heat as well and the air doesn't uh, you know transfer heat to the meat as well as water does so what sous vide lets you do is actually cook really low and really slow let's say 132 degrees if you want a medium rare steak you cook it in for two hours in the water bath and it actually makes the, the, the steak from top to bottom medium rare. Then you can take it out of the water bath and put a quick sear on it on the outside and get it crispy without cooking any more on the interior and then it's a perfectly done steak from top to bottom. So that's what makes it different. I mean, it just the way, the overall things that you can do with it, um, you can make a brisket medium doneness if you cook it for a longer time and when i say longer time it's more like 48 hours than you know 8 or 12 hours you cook it for 48 hours but you cook it at a lot lower temperature in a water bath and you can actually make it where it's nice and tender like a filet mignon so that's what sous vide can do that nothing else really can one of the most uh, questions that get asked and people get kind of freaked out about is, is sous vide safe? And they, they get freaked out about it in a couple different ways. One of them is, the one I see a lot is, is cooking in a plastic bag safe? Well, it's not like you're cooking in a garbage bag or you're cooking in a plastic bag you get at the store. Uh, when you're cooking sous vide in a bag, you're either using a food saver bag or a Ziploc freezer bag both of which are food safe bags. There's no BPA, there's no funky chemicals in them that are going to cause cancer or anything like that. There have been scare articles out there for years with people quoting things from 20 or 30 years ago about the, you know, how unsafe it is for, you know, water and plastic bottles and all that. 99.9, yeah, if not 100% of all uh, plastic now that touches food pretty much is food safe. You don't have to worry about, you know, any chemicals leaching into your food that are going to give you cancer or anything like that. So that's the number one question that people ask is cooking in plastic safe. So the second one is, you know, do I need to cook the meat to 145 degrees for so I don't get sick? Another thing that, um, that's another thing that gets asked a lot. 
you know, is it going to be safe if I cook my meat for 48 hours at 132 degrees? You know, because it's in the danger zone and it might get this and that. One of the things sous vide does, and I'll, I'm going to reference some books and some links down below in the description that will kind of explain that, is it lets you pasteurize the meat. Um, one of the things that when you're cooking at a, a lower temperature, the time that you're cooking actually comes into play more than the temperature itself. So if you're keeping a particular food or meat at 132 degrees, but you're keeping it at there for a longer period of time, you're actually going to pasteurize the meat because there's no more opportunity the for the uh, pathogens to enter the meat because you've got it in a you know sealed bag underwater. So you're not going to have an issue with the pathogens having access to the meat. It's just what's already maybe in there, in the meat itself. But if the combined time and the temperature uh, will pasteurize the meat to make it safe. So there's been lots of studies done with that. Um, so there, there'll be links below in the description that kind of goes over, you know, Douglas Baldwin is one of the uh, ones that people quote all the time. He put together all these pasteurization tables that show you for different foods uh, what the you know, pasteurization times and temps combined are. So a different uh, temperature will have a different time. So as long as you're cooking something within the time temperature range of pasteurization, cooking sous vide is perfectly safe. So that's one of the reasons why it's getting more and more popular. So those are some of the myths that are out there is that it's not safe, you can't cook in plastic, you can't, you know, it's in the danger zone, blah, blah, blah. But as long as you follow basic guidelines that are simple to follow, you don't have any worries about that. One of the things that I like about sous vide is that once you get the basic concepts down of sous vide, how it works and how it can uh, affect the meat and, and the food that you're cooking, it's very easy to, um, to figure it out and do it. Um, and once you get the basics down, you can kind of start playing around and, and figure out how you like to cook. All right, guys, I just want to finish here. I just want to tell you that there's some real uh, incredible resources out there that you can find, and I'll put those down in the description below. One of them is a website called Amazing Food Made Easy, and it's actually uh, put together by a member that's in our group, Fire and Water Cooking, and also has his own group. He's had his own group around for a while now called Exploring Sous Vide on Facebook. You should check those both out. Uh, Jason Logston, he's put together a lot of books about sous vide and modernist cooking in general, and there's a lot of information that he has. I'm going to link to some other uh, resources down below. Doug Baldwin's book. Uh, you know, uh, has all the pasteurization tables and some other books as well. So check out all the information I have in the description below if you want to so learn some more. That's it for this video, guys. Um, I'm going to go into more uh, in some other videos on equipment, um, different recipes, time and temp guides, where to find all this information, um, and all that. So just make sure you follow uh, this series. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. We have a Facebook group and a Facebook page, Fire and Water Cooking. There's a lot of interaction in our group and it's growing day by day. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you can get notified as soon as another video comes up. And I hope you like this video and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.